I created a challenge where you draw pixel art every day for a month. Make sure you watch until the end to see some awesome submissions from you guys and for a special surprise. Over the past couple of months, the Discord channel has been grown and I decided to set some art challenges. We first did a little pixel art pig and that went really well, but the people grew hungry for more. And as a kind and noble leader, obviously, I obliged. I wanted to create a daily challenge that was achievable for everyone, from beginners to pros. So introducing September, 30 days, 30 characters in one bit limits. This is black and white only, so you don't have to worry about shading or color or any of that. It's just about the shapes and forms. The first 27 creatures are in 16 pixels by 16 pixels, with the last three adding more of a challenge in 32 pixels. So this is how it went. This video is sponsored by me. If you want to help support the channel, there's now some merch live on Teespring. I'll be dropping some new designs soon, so keep an eye out. Follow the link in the description. For each of the small characters, the process pretty much stayed the same. I got some reference and tried to create a simple and readable silhouette. If you want to know more about how I approach designing characters, then check out this video I made which goes more into detail about how I design pixel art characters. My goal for this challenge was to stick to a consistent style, as if all of the characters fit inside the same world. I went with this weird exaggerated style where the heads are massive and the bodies are small. I just think it makes the animals look super cute, so I kept going with this. I actually thought this would make it easier having them all in the same style because I'd have a template from the last animal, but it was a lot harder than I thought. The 16 pink pixel pixels pixel limits. 16 pixel canvas was really challenging because you're trying to fit a lot of detail into such a small area, and I quickly learned that every pixel is important. For example, removing a pixel from a corner can make it appear more rounded even though it's just one pixel. I found myself having to make loads of little decisions like this about where each little square would go, but I think that's part of the fun of pixel pushing pixels around. Peter Piper pushed a pixel. And even further, if we look at the first four here, the dog, cat, mouse, and pig all have similar bodies, but if we move just a couple of pixels, we can change how they look entirely. Crazy. It was also really fun to play around with pixels to see how I could add some dimension to the character. Overlaying some of the features helps bring parts forward and give an illusion of depth. For example, look at the cow's mouth and nose area, which is separated from the head with a one pixel border, or the elephant's ear, which is tucked away behind the head. The elephant's trunk even has parts with a two pixel border to really sell that shadow effect. I tried giving each animal their own personality, and this was definitely all in the eyes. We got a grumpy frog, derpy shark, angry eagle, and even a confused octopus. You see how even changing one aspect can completely change how something looks? I tried adding some texture for the hedgehog spikes, but for some reason I just hate it and I don't think it reads very well. <laughs> but one of my favorites has to be the line. It took a while to figure out how the mane was going to work. I originally was going for a textured look like the hedgehog, but since that didn't turn out so well, I tried this inverted technique instead. I really like how it contrasts well with the body and makes the head stand out. So yeah, the lion is one of my favorites. The giraffe was probably the biggest nightmare to fit into this style. How am I supposed to fit that long ass neck into this tiny box? As the challenge was coming to the end, I definitely felt like I was improving, even if some were more difficult than the others. But then it was time for the real test. The big three. Uh, add some explosions in there, editing boy. I, I'm editing it, so I gotta, I gotta add the explosions in myself. <clears throat> With each of the big three characters, I wanted to apply what I'd learned so far while pushing myself even further with some more complex pixel art techniques. It was surprisingly difficult to jump straight into 32 pixels, so as you can see from the time lapse, I usually started with a 16 pixel version and then just scaled it up. I thought that really helped to give me an idea of what the silhouette might look like before scaling it up. And just like the rest of the animals, focusing on the basic shape and silhouette was definitely the way to go. For the phoenix, I kept the same exaggerated proportions as the rest of the animals, but I tried using a dithering technique to give the fiery wings some more texture. Dithering is a great way to get another dimension in the one bit style, and I really like how it turned out, even though the wings took so long. I really loved the look of traditional Asian dragons. 
And for this one, I had this image in mind of a really curly, fiery boy with his tongue sticking out. That's, that's curly, by the way, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. I'm making this up as I go along. Damn. This was actually really complicated to arrange. I went back and forth multiple times, changing the silhouette. After lots and lots of trying, I finally figured out the shape and silhouette and I loved how it was looking. So I decided to challenge myself even more by adding some extra details. We got those little nose hair things standing out from the face. We got the tongue sticking out, the scales on the body and even the fire on the tail. I was actually worried this might look different from the rest of the sheet because of all the detail, but I think because it follows the same big head, small body proportions, I think I just about get away with it. The unicorn was the very last creature on the list, but it also turned out to be my favourite. I think it's my favourite because it combines everything I learned over the month of doing daily pixel art. Simplicity, readability, consistency and the importance of a single pixel. Overall, the shapes are simple and the style is consistent with the rest of the sheet. I use single pixels to round shapes, but also to keep them sharp. I thought about how I can use multiple pixels and outlines to create depth and shadow. I even added in a little bit of texture and detail in the hair and tail. But my favourite part overall is just how much personality I could get into the character through the eyes. Mwah. Beautiful. And here it is, the completed sheet with 30 days of daily pixel art. Let me know which character is your favourite in the comments below. But it wasn't just me taking part in this challenge, there was a whole bunch of members from the community doing it as well. So, let's take a look at some of those submissions. Uh, sorry in advance if I'm butchering any of these names, Just I'm just gonna wing them as I go. I really love how said pixels gave the animals their own personalities, especially the pipe smoking giraffe. And the dragon's face is really awesome. Nice work. Sahara A. Martin really thought out of the box with the final three prompts. Phoenix as in the place, a Komodo dragon for the dragon, and nature's unicorn, the rhino, for the unicorn. Smart, but disqualified. I'm just kidding, they're awesome. Thanks for taking part. Monster Demon certainly has a way with pixels. The creative use of space for each of these was great. I really love the way the giraffe's neck bends to fit inside the box and the crocodile too. Overall, these are a real pleasure to look at and they even went above and beyond with some animations too. I mean, come on, look how cool this is. Awesome work. There's some really cute creatures here from Slightly Spiced. I really love the rabbit because of how tasty it looks. I'm gonna need that one more than Slightly Spiced. <laughs> Uh, just kidding. These are all awesome. Great job. Give me the rabbit. A2860447 did some really great work. Nice job. In all seriousness, the solid silhouettes make the animals read very well. And the different textures in the phoenix from the dithering in the wings in the fire is done so well. Nice work. A2860447. <laughs> Although you might be a robot. I have no idea. Fodder Labs went for this more outline based approach, which is very unique and awesome to see. The owl is definitely my favourite. Who? The owl. Who? The owl. No, I'm doing a, an owl impression. Who? Ha, whoing? G get it? Who? Ha, ha, ha. <coughs> Moving on. Katie had only been learning pixel art for a week before starting the September challenge and look how awesome these turned out to be. This should be a great inspiration for all beginners, so nice work for taking on the challenge. You killed it. <laughs> Tamtul was coming in hot with a variety of different approaches here. The silhouette look, the outlined inverted areas and some dithering for some texture. Great work all around. The hedgehog is definitely my favourite. If only my hedgehog was this good. <laughs> Mr. Clefairy did a Pokemon theme while still sticking to all of the creature prompts. How cool is that? I like that out of the box thinking. Fantastic work. Chris the Cons is bringing us a cute array of animals here. Why is everyone else's hedgehog so good? And that unicorn is looking pretty thick. Nice work, Chris. I really love the simplicity of the Otaru's work. It's very readable from the get go. The crocodile is a personal favorite of mine here. Nice work. Dendi Ushka. Dendyushka. Dendyushka. I'm just going to call you Dendi. Dendi is showing off here with their awesome pixel art abilities making loads of creative and fun little entries. These are such a pleasure to look at. But my favourite here is definitely the octopus. The whole shapes and the use of pixel outlines to make it look like it's overlapping. Dang, this is a good one. Turtle power! 
Pixel Crystallium took part and crystallized their pixels in the September challenge. I don't know if that makes any sense, but go with it, okay? Just, just go with it. <clears throat> I absolutely adore the bat that they did. It looks cute and creepy at the same time. Nice work. Sweet Tiny gave everyone a masterclass on how to use shadows to define shapes in these animal portraits. Remember what I was saying about my entry where I learned how to use multiple pixels to define shadow and overlapping shapes? Well, these are the submissions that I learned it from. Thank you so much for sharing your awesome work and helping me learn. There's a nice display of techniques here from Cheshiru. 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 The way the dragon loops around the entire box is super satisfying. I love it. Victor P. Kobea went out of their way to create this nice looking border for their awesome animals to live in. The turtle looks especially pleased with his new home. Great work. Aliokis actually finished the challenge on September the 5th, which is super impressive. If it was a race, you'd definitely have first place. But it's not, so... <laughs> DP Minty also took part in the challenge, sharing all of their cute creatures. I especially love the interaction between the cat and the mouse. The cat is looking very scary. Nice work, Minty. Minty, you could say it was mint. You could say it was mint lake. It was mint that lake. Ghost Lupo shared all of their entries on the Discord, keeping that community alive. I love all of these little creatures, but the dog is just so happy. And the use of different texture techniques in the dragon for the scales is really creatively done. Nice work. Nairoton was another early finisher completing the challenge on the 18th of September. My favourite is definitely the frog with that super long tongue. Nice work. But again, no prizes. Nope, it's not the race. Come on. Slow down. Take time. It's nice. Lab Skull actually took some of their entries and turned it into a game. How awesome is that? And last, but certainly not least, is Gaspri TV. Not only do all of the animals look consistent style-wise, but they even went out of their way to animate the entire sheet. Each little animal has their own unique animation, and the final three creatures interact with each other so creatively. I think I could look at this for hours. Fantastic work, definitely one of my favourites all around. Whew! Well, we got through a bunch of entries there. I really didn't think so many people would take part and I am sorry if I missed yours. But if you tagged your work with September on social media, I have definitely seen every single one of them. And it was a huge pleasure for me to go through those every single day. There'll be links for all of these featured artists in the description, so definitely go and follow them to check out more of their awesome work. All of this September work can be found on Twitter or Instagram at September. I made some daily collages of all of the entries, so you can enjoy those. And if you want to give this challenge a shot, just do it! I know it was for September, September, blah blah blah, but there is really no time limit. You could do it whenever, and I think it's a great way to improve your pixel art. And if you do give it a go, make sure you share your work on the Discord and social media. But now it's time for a surprise! Soul Tunes Pumpkin Patch! A new pixel art challenge. For this challenge, all you have to do is create a pumpkin using all or some of the colours from this colour palette. The deadline for this challenge is obviously Halloween on October 31st. I love doing these challenges with the community where we can all learn and grow together as artists. So come and join the Discord and social media and let's make some pumpkins. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure you let me know in the comments, leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss any future ones. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Spooky!